Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I have a reflection that I have prepared for you. I've entitled Being Spiritual. You know, when I was young, a young man, I took advantage of opportunities to share my faith and to witness uh, to the Christian faith. When I was uh, in my late teens, I think 19 and 20, I went uh, to a number of conventions. They were called New Age Conventions, and they were large gatherings of New Age practitioners uh, and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people at these and hundreds of booths of people hawking their uh, latest uh, spiritual inventions. The common theme was being spiritual. That could mean having the right kind of crystals, um, having the right kind of uh, scents blowing through your house. It could be tantric yoga. Uh, everyone there was uh, on the common quest for being spiritual. That was a common theme. And that also meant, practically speaking, all were diametrically opposed to traditional Christianity. I learned very quickly that being spiritual meant basically nothing. <laughs> that the semantic range of the word spiritual, as used uh, kind of by the common person on the street uh, in late 20th century America, was uh, so large, this range was so long, large, it rendered the word basically meaningless. That together with uh, a word all, often used by Christians to describe their devotion, the word is relationship. We have a relationship with God. That word relationship, compare, con, when it's in contrast with the word spiritual, we recognize that these two words are basically the same thing. They mean nothing, and they don't communicate anything clearly at all. Basically, they mean I don't have a committed relationship to God as the church has taught uh, people to have it. I'm not a faithful Christian. Well, what do we believers mean by this? What do traditional Christians mean? What, what does an Orthodox Christian mean when he or she says uh, that they are spiritual? Are we spiritual? Do we think we are spiritual? <laughs> this is a great question. Well, it's clear in the New Testament that we are called to be spiritual, that we become spiritual definitively uh, when we become Christians, and that we are to live a spiritual lives. Let me share a few texts with you. We are to sing spiritual songs, Colossians 3.16. We are to be a spiritual house, 1 Peter 2.5. We are to offer spiritual service to God, Romans 12.1. That's just a selection, uh, a smattering of many, many verses in the New Testament that make it exceedingly clear that we are to live spiritual lives. It's also clear, just as clear in the New Testament, that we believers often are not spiritual. <laughs> we are established in a spiritual life. We're called to live the spiritual life, but often we are not spiritual at all. For instance, Galatians 6.1. Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are pneumatiki, you who are spiritual, Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, looking to yourself, lest you too be tempted. Well, here is St. Paul writing to the church in Galatia, and he is giving them practical counsel about what happens when one of the body is stumbling, when one is caught in a trespass. Uh, this happens to believers sometimes, and when they are caught in a trespass, they are not spiritual. They are not living imbued, guided by the Holy Spirit. They are, in fact, living in the flesh. And Paul says it's the responsibility of those who are living the Christian life faithfully, who are pneumatiki, who are spiritual, to restore the fallen brother or sister very gently, paying attention to ourselves, lest we also be tempted. Right? We recognize that the spiritual life is something that has to be cherished, something that has to be held and nourished very carefully. A spirit of judgment will drive the spirit of God right off the throne of our hearts and will fall into our own misery. Another text, this is 1 Corinthians 3.1. I, brethren, could not speak to you as pneumatikis, as spiritual men, 
but as to men of flesh, sarkinis, men of flesh, as to infants in Christ. Here's St. Paul writing not just to a particular person who has fallen, to an entire church and calling them not spiritual and men of flesh. Oh, and if you need any documentation, <laughs> just, just read 1 Corinthians and you'll see just how bad it can get. Uh, so we know, in fact, that uh, we're called to a spiritual life, but not all believers living in the church are living spiritual lives. And those who are living spiritual life today, if they're not careful, uh, won't be spiritual tomorrow. And perhaps by the grace of God and the loving assistance of their brothers and sisters, those who are fallen into infancy or who are living fleshly lives, lives in the sarks, uh, maybe they will become spiritual by their repentance and their return to God tomorrow. So what does this mean? When we talk about being spiritual, we have a, something that we mean extremely concretely. It's not a feeling. It's not about uh, crystals. It's not about getting in touch with the wavelengths of the universe. Uh, it's not about, you know, performing tantric yoga. No, uh, it's something extremely concrete. Christians live spiritual lives and are established in a spiritual life by the grace of holy baptism and the fruit of holy chrismation. These definitive mysteries in the church establish someone as spiritual. Listen to this text. This is 1 Corinthians 12, 13. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body and were made all to drink of one spirit. This is what takes place uh, in baptism. Baptism is the Holy Spirit incorporating us into the body of Christ and making us to drink deeply of himself. This is 2 Corinthians 1, verses 21 and 22, another text. He who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. Here, this beautiful commentary about the sealing of the Spirit about Holy Chrismation is explaining to us that the Holy Spirit is in baptism and chrismation placed into our deep heart. He takes up his residence. We become spiritual. We become his, inspired by him. And we are filled. This is one of the great emphases. If you read the Acts of the Apostles, you'll see this reference over and over again from the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost uh, until the end of the book, that the believers were constantly being filled with the Holy Spirit. Fullness is a, a theme that permeates the Acts of the Apostles because it is the Christian way of life. And the Acts of the Apostles is documenting what Pentecost means, practically speaking, in people's lives. This is uh, the life, this is the Christian life. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, we, we yield to him in our lives. We pray in the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit. We sing in the Spirit. We bear the fruit of the Spirit. We grow in the possession of the Holy Spirit, beseeching Him to dwell in us, to rule us, to govern us more and more uh, every single day, according to our Lord Jesus' encouragement that we should ask the Father and He will continue to give us the Holy Spirit. The spiritual life, dear ones, being spiritual, this is the life of the Church. This is what the church has to offer. It is a life of outrageous intimacy with God, foretold by the holy prophets of old, actualized on the day of Holy Pentecost. It's the miracle of Pentecost that makes the spiritual life possible, that makes being spiritual possible. This last Sunday, the Epistle Lesson, was from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to chapter 7, verse 1. And in that epistle lesson, these words of Isaiah the prophet, Ezekiel the prophet, and Jeremiah the prophet about this outrageous intimacy between God that would be affected by the Holy Spirit uh, were read to the church on this wonderful day. There we read these words, I will dwell in them. This is God speaking. I will dwell in them and walk among them, and they will be my people, and I will be their God. Having intimacy with God, having a Christian definition of relationship with God means 
being baptized and chrismated into the Holy Church. It means to be given the life of the Spirit of God in the Church, which was made possible by the great miracle of Pentecost. There is no being spiritual without the Church. There is no being spiritual without religion, without the Christian faith. By the grace of God poured out in the Church, dear ones, we can become spiritually mature. God calls us to become spiritual people and leave the lives of infants, of babes in the past, in the past. May God grant this to us, deeply spiritual lives. God be with you. Hey everyone, have you signed up yet for PNP's fall conference? It's gonna be great. Every thought captive, cultivating the Christian mind. We're very pleased to be hosting two magnificent speakers. Father Alexis Torrens, who was a professor of patristics at the University of Notre Dame, and Presbytera Jeannie Constantinou, a very well-known priest wife and scholar and author. Both will be here to discuss with us the nature of taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I'm confident it's going to be an extremely edifying weekend. October 13th to 15th here at St. Andrew in Riverside. You can go to PNP and sign up, patristicnectar.org, and sign up for the conference. Come in person or participate by the live stream. Look forward to seeing you.